This recording will demonstrate a brief overview of Qubit Cloud. For the purpose of this demo, we're going to assume that in this instance, the customer has met with our software team and they have created an instance of Qubit Cloud for the customer along with any administrator accounts that they need. You can see here I have a user account uh, by the name of testuser at cubiscan.com. I'm going to go ahead and log in. And this will take us to our home page. Now real quick, I want to take you over to users. In our users page, you can see here we have our test user displayed. Um, if we go ahead and click add, you can see what all a user requires and then the different roles that we have. As I mentioned, when an instance is first being created, we'll create administrator accounts for the team and this will allow you to create other users, developers, any other roles needed in this instance. And the only difference between those roles is really what they can access and what they're authorized to do within Qubit Cloud. When you're getting started in Qubit Cloud, your first step is going to be to create some sites. On our sites page, you can see we have four different sites listed here. If we go over to add a site, you can see that all it requires is a name. This can be as specific or as vague as you'd like it, whether it's a city name, a building name, whatever helps you identify where that Cubiscan or Cubiscans are located. We recommend to create the site first, as it is required in order to create a Cubiscan. Now, since we already have four sites created in this instance, I'm going to go ahead and navigate back to our Cubiscans overview that you saw at the beginning. Now, in this Cubiscan overview, you can see we're displaying all of the Cubiscans we have entered into this instance of Cubic Cloud. Now, if we go ahead and click Add, this takes you to our Create page. The fields required to create a Cubiscan will be the name, the model, the site, the MAC address, and the serial number. These other fields you see here, such as description, IP address, port, those are all optional. You also have the option to create any miscellaneous fields you need to attach to a Cubiscan. It is very important that you enter the MAC address and the serial number correctly, as that is what we use to make the connection to the physical Cubiscan. I'm going to go ahead and hit Cancel and take us back to our overview. Now you can see here that all of those fields we just defined are in this table, as well as a few additional ones we're retrieving from the Cubiscan itself. You also have the option here to enable or disable a Cubiscan. This makes it so that while this Cubiscan is disabled in cloud, we will not receive or accept any measurements from that Cubiscan. Now up here in the top left in advanced options, we have a few filters available for the Cubiscan page. You can filter by Cubiscan model. You also have the option to remove certain columns from this table, as well as organize these columns in the table however you see fit. Now that we have all of our Cubiscans set up, we can go ahead and move on to measurements. This is our measurements table. This table contains all measurements received from the Cubiscans defined on the other page. Here we are collecting your item IDs or barcodes, as well as any other dimensional data coming from the Cubiscan. In Cubic Cloud, you also have the option to configure miscellaneous fields to attach to your measurements. I'm going to go ahead and select measurement misc up here. And this will display all miscellaneous fields currently configured. Now if I select add, I can see the different fields required to send a miscellaneous field. I'm going to demonstrate by sending a test field. Now that these fields are configured, the Cubiscan can display them on their screen. That way, a user, when they go to take a measurement, they can manually select these options before scanning. I'm going to go ahead and simulate a measurement and show you what this looks like. I'm going to hit measure. If I refresh my page here, 
I see this measurement just came in and you can see we have those miscellaneous fields attached with the values I entered on my CubeScan. Similar to the CubeScan table, the measurement table also offers some advanced search options. You have the option to filter your measurements by a specific date, a site, a CubeScan model, and you also have the option to hide any columns from this view. We also have the search over here that we can use to search for a particular value we're maybe looking for. So I'm actually going to search based on a barcode or an item ID. You can see on the far right we have this view column. I'm going to go ahead and select that. And this displays our measurement details view. In our measurement details view, we offer some additional data as well as images that were sent with the CubeScan. In this case, we have images coming from a CubeScan 325. You also have the option to download this measurement details view as a PDF. I'm going to go ahead and clear my filter, and that'll get us back to our default view. Now aside from the PDF download, when it comes to data retrieval, we do have a few options for you. You can see in the top right that you can either download this data in an Excel file or a CSV, but our preferred method of data retrieval is actually our APIs. Once an instance of Qubit Cloud is created, you will also have access to our Swagger API documentation. That is this tab up here, so I'm going to go ahead and navigate there. If a customer is interested in our APIs, what we can do for that customer is make sure that they have a developer account created for a user on their side. That developer account will allow them access to these APIs and the documentation. If I expand the APIs here, we're going to start with our login endpoint. With that developer user's credentials, they're able to test sending their email and their password here. And assuming they have the right credentials and the right account, if they select Execute, down in our response, you'll see we received a bearer token. I'm going to go ahead and copy this bearer token. And if I scroll back up to Authorize, I'm going to input that value here. Now, as long as that bearer token is valid, I can go ahead and test these other endpoints. So let's select our measurements endpoint. You can see here we have multiple optional parameters that can be used to filter down this data. I'm just going to go ahead and execute and grab all of our measurements, though. Now, in our response, you can see we've grabbed all data, 461 records, with all of the same information you saw in that measurements table. You can see here we're including those MISC fields. And I'm actually going to go ahead and search for that same barcode with the images I searched for previously. So I'll go ahead and enter that here. And you'll see in the response, now you can see that we've also been sent some file paths. So these are the file paths for each of the images attached to that measurement. I'm going to go ahead and copy this one. And if I scroll back up here, we do have an image API that allows you to access specific images with that file path. So I'll go ahead and execute this one now. Then you'll see it gives us the file to download that successfully downloaded that image. We also have an endpoint for CubeScans that allow you to grab all CubeScans as well, very similar to the measurements API. And that concludes our Qubit Cloud demonstration. Thank you.